So you'll see exactly what it's going to be like. Uh, let me share my screen and we can get started. Let's see. Okay. So my name is Kelly again. I have to teach you some Greek words along the way. So Yasu is how you say hi um, in Greek. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about who is Celestial Cruises because we're a neat little niche cruise line that specializes in Greece. So you might not have heard of us before. I'm going to talk you through some of the highlights of the two different itineraries that Singles International Travel is offering this year, the seven night idyllic Aegean, which focuses all on some of the most amazing Greek islands, and the seven night three continents, which is truly a bucket list itinerary. And then I'll talk a little bit about what your home at sea, the celestial crystal is going to be like, so you have an idea of what it will be like on board when you're cruising with us. Celestial is the only Greek cruise line, which is pretty awesome. We've been around since 2014, but we're actually part of a larger family of travel brands um, that's been around for almost 85 years. So we are firmly rooted and have a very long standing tradition of operating in the Eastern Mediterranean. One of the things that makes us quite unique is that all of our cruises start and end in Athens. So we really do the Aegean region in depth. Besides Greece, we, we touch on some of the bordering countries around the Aegean, Turkey, Egypt, Israel, and Cyprus. And we have two different ships in our fleet. They're both the really nice mid-sized ships that are small enough to give you a more personalized experience on board. Um, and also to get you into kind of the nooks and crannies of the region that a lot of the bigger cruise lines can't get into. One of the things that makes us um, a great experience, I think, is that we're all inclusive. So the price that you pay is truly the price you're going to pay to have a full experience on, on celestial cruises. There's not a lot of additional added costs, like it's hard to rack up a big bill with us. So we cover what I like to say, the meat and potatoes. We give you everything you need to really take care of the big stuff. So we include three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have unlimited classic drinks. So classic drinks means beer, wine, liquor, like well drinks. So you can get mixed drinks like a vodka tonic or a rum and coke. The basic drinks are included, but because we're Greek, we have Greek beer, Greek wine that's included. Um, we have your co like coffee drinks, like lattes, cappuccinos, cappuccino fredo, my favorite. Those are all part of the included drinks package. Now, now my favorite part of the all-inclusive package are the select shore excursions because you automatically get two excursions included in your cruise fare, which is a huge value. And they are some awesome excursions I'm going to tell you about. We have complimentary entertainment every evening. So you're always going to have some fun in the Muses Lounge. We have a different show every evening. And then all the gratuities for our crew are included in the cruise fare as well. So you're not going to have to worry about leaving a big tip. There's just a few things here and there that you want to budget for. Um, if you want Wi-Fi, for example, that's not included. We have different packages that you can book on board with varying lengths of time. If you want to add on additional optional shore excursions, we have a whole range of fantastic excursions um, that you can choose from. If you want to go to the spa, that's something you want to budget for extra. And also, if you like to drink the fancy drinks and premium wine and top shelf liquor, that is an additional fee and something um, that you can do. You can either pay by drink or if you know you want to drink the best stuff all week long, you can actually upgrade this year to a platinum drink package on board for the whole week. It's about 189 euros. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. Buck. Now, food. I'm a huge foodie and it's a huge part of travel, especially in a place like Greece. And because we're Greek, 
this is how you continue to experience the Greek culture even when you're on board with us. We have continental options, so we try to give people a lot of choices, but we're always going to have traditional Greek and local recipes that you can also try, and it'll always be designated on the menu with the Greek flag next to it. So even at breakfast, you could order a spinach and feta pie for breakfast. You could order local Greek yogurts that we source locally with Greek honey. Dinner, we have things like moussaka, pastichio, baklavas on the menu every night this year for dessert as an option. Um, but the food on board is fantastic. Now, if you've never been to Greece before, Vicky will tell you, the Greeks are some of the warmest, most hospitable people on the planet. And in Greek, there is a word philoxenia that translates to being a friend to a stranger. And this is kind of like a core value of Greek society. That's just how Greeks are. And that is one of the core pillars of the celestial brand identity. So this is what we live and breathe on board we treat all of our guests like they are part of our big Greek family. And year after year, because this is so important to us, we win awards when it comes to our, our incredible customer service on board. Our crew is going to take such great care of you. Now, at the heart of what really makes Celestial Cruises so different and special than your regular cruise line is we really are about showcasing the best of Greece, the best of our backyard. The cruise itself is really secondary. When you go to a place like the Greek islands and around the Aegean Sea, you have to either take ferries or fly. And by going with us, with the, uh, the way that we've built our itineraries, you're maximizing your time in the destination. We're very port intensive. We hardly have any at sea days, except on the three continents because we have to get from Athens all the way down to Egypt. Um, but you're spending maximum time in each destination. You spend more time off the ship than on the ship, and you really use the ship like a floating hotel where you sleep at night while we're sailing. Now, we have an unbeatable mix of destinations from the big blockbuster stops like Mykonos and Santorini, but there's so much more to Greece than Mykonos and Santorini. So we take you to some of these other magical places like Crete, my favorite, Milos, um, Rhodes, and you get to see the full picture of what Greece is really like with us. These are some of the spectacular places right in our backyard that we go. From Santorini to Istanbul, to the pyramids in Egypt, Ephesus, Crete, to the ancient Minoan civilizations. Now, the, the seven night idyllic Aegean is gonna be happening this summer, July, uh, well, Vicky, you, it will actually be the 15th to the 23rd because you'll come in early just to spend some time in Athens before you hop on the cruise. From Athens, we head to um, the second largest city in Greece, Thessaloniki, all the way up in Northern Greece, which is a fantastic addition to the itinerary this year. Um, I love to eat. This is like the second or third time I've already said that in this presentation, but UNESCO just designated Thessaloniki a city of gastronomy. And it's the only one with that designation in Greece. It has um, really amazing culinary traditions in Thessaloniki because it's where the East meets the West. Imagine all of the people that used to cross through Thessaloniki, the Spanish, the Arab traders, um, Sarf, uh, what is the one, Sarfitic Jews. I can't think of, I'm not saying that word right. <laughs> um, there's, uh, there's, it's a whole melting pot of where the East and West used to mix. And there is uh, flavors in Thessaloniki that you don't find anywhere else in Greece that makes it so special. We head to Kushirasi, Turkey. We're there from 1 p.m. until 9 p.m. We go to the medieval island of Rhodes from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. We head to Crete in the morning on the Wednesday from 7 a.m. to noon. And we have my favorite excursion, optional excursion that you can add on any itinerary in Crete where we go into the countryside to meet my friend, Mr. Vasilius, who his family owns um, a winery, which is spectacular. Um, and you get to drink some wine, some Rocky, some do some Greek dancing. 
We make it to Santorini later that day in the afternoon at 4.30, setting you up to have the best sunset of your life. You can explore the amazing blue domes of Ia and um, Fira and pick your perch along the cliff somewhere to watch an incredible sunset before you take the cable car back down to the port. Mykonos were there from 8 a.m. until 2 o'clock in the morning. So you have more than a full day to explore Mykonos. You could even head over to the nearby island of Delos, which I just got to do with, um, which is a totally protected archeological island where Apollo and Artemis were born. So if you're into Greek mythology, we have an awesome optional excursion for you there. And then we end with Magical Milos, which Travel and Leisure Magazine named Milos the number one most beautiful island in the world this year. And we go there. Now, most other cruise lines don't go there because their ships are too big. Milos is one of the four volcanic islands in the Greek islands, and its landscape is super dramatic. It has beaches like you've never seen in your life. It feels like you've landed on the moon and the most turquoise water you've ever seen. Now, I'm gonna tell you about the included excursions that you're gonna have on this cruise because you automatically get these included and they are spectacular. Like the value of these is amazing. The first one is in the port of Kushadasi, Turkey. Now Kushadasi is on the Southern coast of Turkey. It's a super like laid back coastal town. And this part of Turkey is known for its beaches, but also there's a, quite a number of Christian pilgrimage sites. And Ephesus is obviously the most significant. So, <clears throat> We take you on a guided tour of the ancient site of Ephesus, which you're basically walking on ancient Roman roads, some of the most well-preserved Roman ruins in the world. And we're going back to biblical times. So Ephesus is where Mary went to live after the, crucif uh, the crucifixion. And you can actually upgrade your included excursion for a supplemental fee to visit Mary's house, where they say that Mary died. Um, you, you get to see things like Roman baths, statues of Nike, and then you end at the incredible library of Celsus. This is just such a spectacular site. There's the theater as well. Um, you, you can see the city, you can see the layout, like literally Cleopatra walk these streets, which is like crazy to think about the history of this place. Now, after Ephesus, we actually go to a traditional Turkish rug making co-op, which I love this stop because I'm always, I love learning about like the cultural traditions of a place. And this is really cool. So Turkish rug making is one of the oldest traditions in Turkey and Turkish rugs are hand woven on a loom with silk. And this is a co-op that the government gives money to in order for these guys to teach the next generations how to keep the tradition alive. So we get to learn where silks come from. On the left, those are literally like silkworm cocoons. That's where the whole process starts. They can extract one mile of silk from one silkworm, which is crazy. So they, they show us the whole process, how they start it on um, extracting the silk from the silkworms. Then, we get a whole presentation on all the different types of Turkish rugs, how long they take. Um, they, they have some of the women actually doing the weaving to show us the techniques that they use on the loom. And while they're doing that, you can drink some Turkish wine or have some Turkish tea. And afterwards they have, um, there's some cool little shops there as well. And they put out a traditional buffet of like different Turkish mats. Say that's, so that, is all included as part of your cruise fare this day, which is awesome. Now on the island of Rhodes, there's your second included excursion. And Rhodes, what, what makes Rhodes so unique on this itinerary is Rhodes is one of the largest, most well-preserved medieval cities in all of Europe. So the architecture and feel of Rhodes is completely different than every other place that we go to. And in Rhodes, we go to the town of Lindos, which is about a 45 minute drive from the port. It's so beautiful. Um, and we hike 290 steps up to the top to the Acropolis of Lindos. It's worth it. 
you it takes about 20 minutes you can really kind of go at your own pace but once you get to the top you have the temple of athena which is dating back to like three or four hundred bc at the top you see shades of blue for as far as you can see in the aegean sea and it's just stunning um we go back to the old town of Rhodes as well and walk through the whole walled city we walk through the citadel of the knights this is known as the street of knights and this is where you can learn all about a lot of the history of the knights of saint john as well so this is crazy because nowhere else we go to looks like this and we actually have a new addition to the excursion this year which i got to experience we visit a ceramic artist studio because in the greek islands there is a long-standing tradition of ceramic pottery and so we got a really amazing demonstration by this man who is hand making all of the ceramics and his wife and his daughter hand paint all of them so it was really cool to learn about the process that they use and see all of their work um, on this so that's all included in roads now we have a whole a list of optional excursions that you can add in all of the other ports. I'm sure Vicki has done some and she can tell you her favorites. Um, but what is also new is we actually have some really cool small group optional excursions where it's six to 15 people and they're categorized based on what your interests are. So we have some that are ar archaeology themed, we have some culinary like cooking classes. We have sun and sand if you're if you like to go out on the water or go to the beach, we have some cultural like um, excursions as well. So if you like to travel in smaller groups and if, if you've been to any of these places before these kind of take you even more under the surface and connect you to those different interests that you might have. Now, the three continents itinerary is happening in December, so, or sorry, departing in November, so November 25th to December 3rd. And this is truly a blockbuster itinerary. This has a lot of bucket list destinations. I mean, you can check the, the pyramids and the Holy Land off of your list in one go, which is pretty spectacular. Um, it goes from Athens. We do have one at Sea Day we go to cairo to port said where you're in port all day long and that whole day you don't have to worry about a thing because we include and take care of everything for you we go to israel we port in ashdod from 8 a.m until 10 p.m so another full day those are two big back-to-back -back days like your brain is going to be like combusting by the end of tuesday because you have just taken in some of the most important parts of history in the whole world and which is why i love that next is lima soul cyprus because it's a very chilled out beautiful low-key place um and it's kind of like the hidden gem of this itinerary we go to Rhodes as well on this itinerary from noon till 6 30 and Kusadasi is to, to see Ephesus as well. So um, Egypt is included for you and also Kusadasi to go to, to the same Ephesus excursion is also included on this itinerary. So for Egypt, the, it's a long day. It is a full on day, but you are not, you are gonna see what you came to see. We include the pyramids. You're gonna see the Sphinx. You're gonna go to the archeological museum in Cairo and your lunch is included. So that is all part of your cruise fare that it's taken care of for you. So you don't have to stress about what you're gonna do in Egypt. Um, Israel is huge. This day we leave open because a lot of people wanna to go to Israel for different reasons and they have different motivations. So we want you to be able to design your time in Israel. We have a few different optional excursions that you can add on my what i would do having been to israel before i have to go with jerusalem and bethlehem because this is one of the most fat i in terms of my travels this is the most fascinating place i've ever been you are stepping back in time you have all the three major religions within walking distance of each other their most important sites the western wall the church of the holy sepulcher and the al-aqsa mosque and dome of the rock they're all right there. It's incredible to even think about 
this place and, and what it means to so many people. You also go to Bethlehem to see the church of the nativity um, as well. It's a, another long day, but so rich. There's other options as well. If you want to do Tel Aviv and Jaffa, what I find so spectacular about this stop is you have Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It's really only like a 45 minute taxi ride from each other. And it's like visiting two different planets. <laughs> Unfortunately, you probably only have time to visit one of those planets, uh, but Jerusalem is hands down insane. I love it. Limassol Cyprus is the next stop after Israel. So it's kind of like you can decompress a little. It's, it's not as an intense place as Egypt and Israel. You can stroll around Limassol, this beautiful place, but I have received such incredible feedback on one of our optional excursions that goes to a very traditional village of Omodos, which is a wine making region of Cyprus. And you visit the ancient archeological site of Curium, and then you go to Omodos, which has very specific culinary traditions and they include lunch in this excursion. And I have had a number of people who have done this tell me it's the best lunch they've ever eaten in their life. So this is the one I would recommend that I personally would do on this trip. And a village like this is like, unlike any other place you see, it's such a special place, um, very traditional. Like this is where the traditions of a place are preserved. So that's what I would do. Now, your home at sea is gonna be the celestial crystal, no matter which itinerary you choose, this is the ship that you would be on. It's a great little mid-sized ship. So on average, we have about eight to 900 guests on board the ship. So it's big enough to give you a cruise experience, but small enough, you can get around easily. You can get where you need, you're not walking for like 15 minutes to try to get somewhere. It's easy to get around. Our crew remembers your face. They remember what you want to drink. They know, they know who you are. They remember your name. They take such great care of you. And we can give our guests that special attention on this ship size. She has all of the amenities you need to have a comfortable stay. She has a swimming pool, we have a hot tub, we have a fitness center, we have a spa. Um, the, the Lassus bar on the bottom right is my favorite place to get a cappuccino when I get back on board in the evening and just relax, maybe watch the sunset while we're sailing away. We have all different types of staterooms on this ship from interior all the way up to grand suites. So depending on how, what type of cabin you like, we have interior staterooms, we have ocean view staterooms. Sometimes they might either have like a porthole window or the bottom right, you can see it has a big picture window. We have our junior balcony suites on the left-hand side. And then we have some higher suite categories as well. So for dining, we have two main dining rooms and you can sit down and order from a menu for every meal if you like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also have a buffet area as well. If you prefer to eat like a quick breakfast or a quick lunch, um, which you can do with our, with our dining rooms, what we do is it's a little more relaxed. It's open dining. So while the dining room is open, you can come eat whenever you're hungry. You don't have like an assigned time or an assigned table. You can change every evening if you like. Um, we have some outdoor eating space as well on deck nine near our buffet area. And we're a little more casual on board because you're really out exploring all day. So you don't have to get like super dressed up or anything in the evening. Um, you can wear nice jeans and like a nice shirt if you like. You can wear a casual dress if you like. Our only real strict rule is you can't wear shorts to dinner in the dining room. But pretty much everything else kind of goes. We do have a formal night, our captain's night, and also a Greek blue and white night. But even the formal night, it's really not too formal. You could wear a pretty casual dress. You don't definitely don't need to bring a gown or anything. It's really up to you and your, your personal style. Um, <clears throat> a little different because we're Greek. We're, we're not, you know, a traditional American cruise line. So we don't have 24 seven dining. You, we do have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner included. And if you wanted to order any meals outside of the dining room hours, you can order from our 24 seven room service menu, but there is an additional fee for that. 
So that's just a, something a little different um, than other cruise lines to be aware of. And what I'm really excited about is we actually have a specialty restaurant on board this year, which is new. And I just got to try it myself to like two weeks ago. Um, Diane Kochilis is a Greek American celebrity chef and she specializes in the blue zone diet. Blue zone is designated areas around the world where people live the longest. And a lot of that has to do with their diet. So she specializes in the Mediterranean diet and she has um, a food travel show on PBS called My Greek Table. So we actually have a collaboration with her on board where she has designed a six course set tasting menu for us. And I got to eat all of it and it was amazing. Um, it's 45 euros per person and you get, you are gonna eat like a king or queen. She, there is a course with like homemade bed, bread and pita bread to start with the, this amazing pesto dip, this amazing spicy feta dip and a, a, like an eggplant dip. There's octopus carpaccio, there's a lemon fish soup, there is a, a beef loin dish, there's a cheese plate dish where they literally bring, wheel out a whole cart of cheese and cut it in front of you. It was amazing. So this is new. You can really taste some of the, the most traditional Greek recipes, but with a modern twist. We have entertainment every evening. You're always gonna have a lot of fun. My favorite show is the Cirque Fantastique where they do all their technical acrobatic um, performances. We have a Latin night, a cabaret night. We have a story of a Greek wedding one night and uh, music from around the world. We also have live music playing in the Muses Lounge before the program of the evening starts. So you can kind of relax after dinner. Uh, maybe take in our bazooki player, which is the traditional Greek instrument. But we also have um, a nightclub. If you like to dance at night, you, that's like late night. It normally starts around after 11 p.m. If you're still awake, I never made it this trip. Um, but it's a lot of fun. We have a Greek band playing next to the pool. So with us, you're always experiencing Greece, even when you're on board, which is a, quite a special experience. We do have our website where you can read all of the different protocols in place. Um, right now, you still have to wear a mask on board. You, you must be vaccinated and boosted. You have to come with a negative COVID test um, and bring it to you for embarkation. So those are some of the important things that you would read on that site. Again, vaccination is required. We are in compliance with the local and government and CLIA requirements for us to cruise. So these are not necessarily celestial cruises created protocols. These are protocols by organizations like the EU Healthy Gateways and the Greek government that we have to implement. So we're just doing our best to keep all of our guests and our crew and the local communities that we visit safe. You're our number one priority. So again, you, these are just some of the things, just because if you are considering cruising in July, this is important to know since it's not that far away, you would just have to get a test in Athens the day before your cruise. And it's very easy. I just went through this. You can literally get a rapid antigen test in Athens at any pharmacy, walk in with no appointment. It's like seven euros and you get your results within five minutes. So it's very easy to do. Again, you have to wear a mask um, and that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions for any questions about the pricing and availability and the different um, cabins and staterooms available. You would just call Singles Travel International for those specific details. But if you have any questions about the cruise and what it's like or excursions, let's chat. What, what do you got for me? Yeah, and I also want to say, I believe for our Greek Islands Fantasy Cruise, there are still some premium deals available. I think three continents, the premium deals are all sold out, but um, does anyone have any questions for Kelly or for me? No? I don't know what. Oh, sorry. Can you? Oh, you know what? I, I switched. <laughs> I 
to switch my camera. I don't know how to switch it back. Yeah, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I, okay. don't, I don't really have any questions. I did sign up for the, um, the trip a little later than uh, a, a little later because normally um, uh, I, I tend to know exactly what I want to do, but it, it just sounded really interesting. And I like the fact that um, it, it goes to all those different places. So, um, so yeah. Which one did you sign up for? Three continents? Uh, the, three, like... the three continents. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's uh, fabulous. I did that itinerary March of 2020. And again, I was saying to Kelly, because the world was shutting down, we didn't get to go to Israel, but we got an extra day in Egypt and everywhere we went, it was just, it was so interesting and you'll love it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that itinerary. It's, it just sounds really exciting. And celestial, like traveling on celestial, um, it, it really is like you feel like by the end of the cruise, you know the crew, they know you, they remember you. It feels very um, familial. It, it's nice. No, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Have you traveled? You look familiar. Have you and I traveled together before, Catherine? No, no, but I'm, I'm going to be with you on the Mediterranean. Uh, oh, in and, oh, great. Yeah. I'm, I'll be on that trip, but I'm leaving tomorrow for Canada so, with Linda. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been on quite a few. Yeah. I've been on quite a few. This, um, you did Utah. I did Utah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Were you there? No, but I, that's why I, I thought I had traveled with you because I saw pictures and um, and Linda and I are friends, and I'm like, gosh, she looks really familiar. <laughs> but oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing so, a lot of nice travel. I I am. Yeah. I mean, this year especially is is uh, jam packed. Um, next year, I don't have any um, plans so far. I'd like to do maybe uh, one of the Greek, either the Greek cruise or the the other one. The um, or you, the other one, there's like a, 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 there's two of them, right? We have the Greek islands for next summer. And then, oh gosh, another one yeah. that goes to Greece? Yeah, it's, uh, let me, let me go get my list. <laughs> I should know this. <laughs> another one that goes to Greece. I can't think. Oh, it's the rendezvous. Oh, the Isle of Crete. okay. The Isle of Crete. Yeah. Okay. But I'm keeping I'm keeping everything kind of open because I'm really looking forward to. I, I'd either like to do the India, or the Cam, the Vietnam. Cambodia and yeah. Vietnam. So, yeah. Well, we do have back to back Greek islands cruise with Isle of Crete. <laughs> yes. Yes, I saw that on my list here <laughs> i would yeah. say i would say if you've never been to greece have you ever been to greece no i this is personally i feel like it's nice on the cruise you see more of the islands and then if you wanted to go back to one then you would know where you know where you might want to return yes yeah because there's a, that Isle of Crete singles rendezvous. There's two next summer. There should and then be of three. Course, oh, is there three? We usually, oh, you're right. Yeah, there's we do three. Memorial Day, uh, 4th of July, and Labor Day every year. Yes, yes. And we try to do one of the ones back to back with the Greek uh -huh. Islands crew. So they're, yeah. Right, right. Because a lot of people choose to do, they 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 do both or they're like I'm I'm in Greece I'm so far I may as well stay in Europe for more yeah. time exactly exactly so yeah I'm thinking about doing again the the Greek cruise and then also and then one towards the end of next year um, again the India or the Cambodia if that comes to fruition I don't know let's hope <laughs> yeah because yeah, sometimes they're listed but it doesn't happen yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, the three continents is um, that one's filling up. Is it? Yeah. It's, I think there are like, I could be wrong, but I want to say there are like 20 people so far. I mean, oh filling up as far as with, with singles travel. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So you're leaving for uh, uh, the, um, there's one that you're leaving. I leave for, for Holy Lands. Lands. Holy yeah. Land. Yeah. Uh, when is I, it? That's May yeah. 23rd. I go to Rome. Yes. Because I've traveled with Mark and Dora and uh, a couple of other, Lauren I've traveled with and I've traveled with um, uh, in, in Iran. Oh, so yeah. yeah, those are all the people on that trip. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We only have 10 people on that or 11 um, on the Holy Land. But then the summer cruise, there's a good, I mean, the coastal is a good group. Oh, my God, yes. that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people on that trip. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people on that trip, too, because we all met uh, during the New Year's Eve cruise. Okay. Yeah, those are yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but thank you for um, having this. I um, uh, it was nice to get all that information regarding the cruise line. I, I had no idea there was Celestial Cruise Line. I had no idea, so it was good to see that. Um, and yeah, great. And yeah, and thank Kelly. Thank you very much for coming on and doing this wonderful presentation. And you having just gotten back, it's all. In your, I mean, I could see, I could hear it in your voice. And you said something, I forget what it was. You were talking about something about your trip. And I was, oh, maybe it was the lot the, the, the Lhasa bar on the back of the, the cappuccino. <laughs> I love it's the best place. It's where whenever we get back at the end of the day, the our group always convenes out there and we'll have coffee or cocktails and watch the sunset. And yep. it's just, it's, yep. yeah, very, That's very that. nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. thank you. Does anyone else, do you, do you have another question, Catherine or Cheryl? Do you have any questions? I don't, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining tonight, for taking time out to, um, you know, to hang out with us and to listen to what Kelly has to say. And Kelly, thank you very, very much again for your partnership with Celestial and, and everything. Caracolo. What does that mean? You're welcome. Oh, para yes. You can, use Hi, it yeah. you can use it for please and you're welcome. Okay, so it's like... Paracolo. Like Prego. Okay, Paracolo. <laughs> like Prego. Like Prego yes. in Italian. Yes, yes, yes. For, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well thank you good night everybody bye guys take care bye bye thank you thank you